using social psychology to help the environment. So the societal problem that I focused on was uh, pollution. The large amounts of waste that humans generate has become detrimental to our environment. Waste is not waste that is not biodegradable is filling the landfills and oceans. Some of the things that we throw away can accumulate over time and cause harm to physical habitats that humans rely on for resources. Some plastics are only used one time and then they're thrown away. These plastics can take 500 years or more to decompose. And uh, the photos down below uh, show accumulation of waste plastic. Methods used in the past to prevent pollution. So uh, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, reduce uh, means reduce the amount you use and throw away. Uh, reuse means reuse uh, things if you can before you throw them away. And recycle means to recycle items that can be recycled instead of throwing them away. Um, how social psychology has been used. So at zoos, they put uh, the recycling bin right next to the trash bin. Uh, the bins are located out in front of everyone. The trash bin says landfill and the recycling bin says recycle. Um, these are some examples uh, in the photos here. Uh, the photo on the far left is actually a photo of the bins at the Columbus Zoo. Um, Pictures of animals who have been affected by pollution are used to generate uh, empathetic concern. Uh, I'm sure everyone's seen the viral video of the sea turtle getting the straw pulled out of its nose. Um, that, uh, that's a picture of it in the bottom right corner. After that video became popular, uh, many restaurants on the coast stopped serving straws and they, or they uh, switched to paper straws. Factors that may prevent people from recycling at home. So what I mentioned before were good ways to get people to recycle in public. But what about at home? Most people produce the most garbage when they're at home. So uh, no societal pressure. Uh, no one's there to see if they're recycling or not. So they don't uh, feel societal pressure like they would if they were in public. And there's little to no uh, egoistic motives for recycling at home. Uh, it's a little extra work to recycle, and they may think that it's not worth it. Uh, they might think it's easier just to throw everything away. How to use social psychology to get people to recycle at home. So I know this idea is a little bit out there, but uh, I really think it could make a difference in the long run. So my idea was uh, to create a reward for people to earn by recycling at home. Um, they could log the amount that they recycle and they can earn a reward after they reach a certain amount. Um, the reward could be something they could wear in public like a hat or a shirt or sweatshirt. Um, it could say something like, I did my part to prevent pollution, or I did my part to help the environment. Um, the material of the shirts can be polyester yarn made from recycled plastic. As I actually looked that up, and there are shirts made from recycled plastic, so I guess that would be a win-win. How does this apply to social psychology? So it appeals to the person's egoistic motives for helping. Um, they earn rewards for doing it. Uh, the shirt is a way that they receive credit for what they did. Um, and they may receive praise or honor from others when they are seen wearing the shirt in public. Um, for negative state of, or for negative state relief, they may experience mood enhancement or heightened self, self esteem because they earned the shirt. Um, so when, when more people are wearing the shirts in public, it can appeal to the desire or pressure to conform to group norms. So when they see a lot of people wearing them, they'll want to do what it takes to get the shirt so they can have one too and fit in. Uh, the conclusion. Uh, its long-term effects will have a positive impact on the environment. People will be more likely to recycle. 
Um, people will be less likely to buy one-time use plastic that can not be recycled and will instead buy more plastic that can be reused or recycled. Um, there will be less non-biodegradable garbage going into our rivers and oceans. Um, we could we could possibly reach the point where the garbage that we clean up from the rivers and oceans will not be replaced by new garbage and plastic waste. Uh, we'll be able to continue to enjoy the recreations and resources that the rivers and oceans have to offer for humans. And that's all. Thank you.